Sleigh bells ring, are you listening? In the lane, oh, snow is glistening. A beautiful sight, we're happy tonight. Walking in a winter wonderland. I didn't write that down, but I do like that I like one that too. one. The Judds, their version, they go, walking in a winter. They scoop the W. Walking, yeah, walking, I, can, I remember uh-huh. that. And then, of course, I love the Eurythmics version of that, because it's real electronic and it feels icy. And also because we don't really have winter wonderland. No, inside. I remember one one snowy Christmas. Yeah, out of the thirty eight. Maybe I've we've had. had two in my lifetime. Yeah. in Nashville. Yeah. Okay, so we wanted to do a holiday edition. For well, I wanted to do a holiday edition. Are you taping? Yeah, I'm taping. <laughs> I wanted to do a holiday edition, and Kate's going along. <laughs> <laughs> sort of okay here we go <laughs> okay amy childress obanoff uh wants a, a description of the clock in the hall that chimed the one that reminded you of the passage of time when you went home for the holiday so this is from in my mother's house it is which of course is a very special song for me you know i was thinking about this amy and um i do believe that we had a clock and I don't think it was necessarily a big grandfather clock it's possible because I do remember my mother liked antiques and I don't think we had a standalone you know like tall clock but we had like what I call a table clock though my mother who did hang it on the wall and it seemed like it chimed I don't know where else I would have gotten that mental picture um, I also think my mother-in-law, Miss Campbell, I think they had one. And I think they might have even had the the tall clock. Mm-hmm. The grandfather clock? The grandfather. I think I'm I remember that, that and, from when I dog sat. Yeah, I'm thinking that too. So uh, I think it's a combination. But I, I, there's something in the sounding of the clock, and I know it came from either both my mother and my mother-in-law. I don't think it, it did not come from my grand, my grandmother's, but... Uh, was there something in the clock that would tell, like it would, like the the sun and the moon? Yeah, it would. On? You know how it goes around. There's like the gap. Yes. Mm-hmm. There's like the. It was a fancy one, you know. So there's the clock, but then behind the arms, there's a little thing that shows, like an inset, you know, and it's showing the time of day, and it moves around from blue to sunshine. Mm-hmm. You know, the clock, mm-hmm. the sun, the moon shows like that. That's okay. how. It's that kind. Okay. It's that kind of clock. In my head, it was all gold, but in reality, if, if it's reality, it was blue. It was more. It was more colorful than I thought. Well, only the parts that moved. The the yeah. parts that moved were like dark blue for midnight for the moon. Mm-hmm. That little part that moved mm-hmm. within the face, you know. But the clock itself was, you know, wooden in a wooden okay. case. So much. About it got this me clock. thinking, Amy. I know it got me thinking, Amy. Uh, Wendy Young wants to know, did you or did you not? Oh, did you or did you not have an aluminum Christmas tree at any point in your life? I think we did. I know I did at my mother-in-law's house, but my mother-in-law really decorated all over. My mother, early on, you know, maybe, but generally we did not have those unless my mother or Miss Campbell was having, you know, a Christmas, you know, where people drop open house where they had more than one tree. So then in the in the the living room, the nice living room, you know, there's the den mm-hmm. or what people call family rooms, I call a den that was usually the real tree or whatever. But some, but a fancy tree. I think every now and then my mother we might have had an aluminum silver tree and then she only put like, you know, silver or the blue sparkly, you know, they were decorated differently. Usually, we always had a real tree growing up, and we would go out to get it, you know, with my parents. We would pick the tree, and then we would come home and decorate. So that was the main... I mean, there was little things sitting around my house, but it wasn't overly done. Again, unless maybe an open house. You know, there's a nativity set here and there, one from the Holy Land, of course. Oh, yeah, of course. And... <laughs> Uh, but generally, uh, we got a real tree. We went out and we went out and picked it up, and then we came home and then decorated, uh, and that was our our main tree. So I'm not saying we didn't there in the '70s at some point, 
Um, but I don't remember that being the main tree. It just seems like some moon pie dreams type realness. Well, it, it <laughs> people want you to have an aluminum tree. Well, I, I'm I'm saying that we <laughs> we probably did, but it wasn't the main one. And I know that Miss Campbell had some, but she had she had decorations everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. That's how that's mm-hmm. <laughs> that's how they do in Garden. My mother's Alabama. was a little bit more, not so much, but very laid back, but very specific. You know, my mother would like to keep the ornaments. Miss Campbell did too, you know. So there would be a tree for like family ornaments that we had made or people had given through the years and all that. And then there would be just the aluminum tree is kind of the more sparkly, let's, it's a decor thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. (laughs) The aluminum tree would be decor in the living room, but not the main tree. I don't, I don't see it that way in my brain. Thanks for asking, Wendy. Thanks, How are you doing? Thanks, Wendy. <laughs> okay, Ken Bailey wants to know, what is the most difficult part of the changing Christmas traditions as family ages and changes? Well. The, yeah, this, this this Christmas is going to be different. A yeah, bit. yeah. Well, you know, well, main thing is that as we all age and families grow and then shrink, essentially, you know, people can't come or whatever. And the the distances, I know that uh, as, you know, me and my sister and brother, everybody, they grow up, you get married. We don't have children, but I have many nephews and grandnephews now. I have lots of nephews, some nieces, but not as many as the nephews. You know, everybody disperses in our culture, except for the one little family unit yourself. Uh, but me and I are always traveling to the other groups of the family. It's different. Yeah. I mean, you know, it is what it is. Sometimes, uh, because a good portion of my family lives in Central Florida now, then we might go to Birmingham, Gardendale, and then go on down to Central Florida. And my brother lives up here, though. We might go to Gregor Barrel with him. And all the nephews are all big. Some are married and have children of their own, so they're all big boys. So it's just kind of hit and miss. 